Hi, I'm Anne from France, and I'm here to tell you my story. Please like and subscribe. I was born when my mom was just 18. Since childhood, mom wanted me to have everything in the world, everything she didn't have growing up. One time, Christmas was coming, and I really wanted a Barbie I'd seen my friends play with, but mom said she'd get it for me on Easter instead. But mommy, you promised. You can't break a pinky promise. Please, please, please. And on Christmas, I was so happy to see that she got the Barbie for me. She was the best. Soon, mom started getting all sorts of random things. A vase, some magazines, which I totally knew she'd never read, and the most bizarre things. Tons of garden gnomes. Like, why would mom buy that when we didn't have a garden? I knew something was off. For starters, we didn't need that stuff. And secondly, I wondered where mom was getting the money from. She worked as a baker in someone else's bakery, and I knew the job didn't pay that much. So one time in seventh grade, when mom went grocery shopping, I followed her. It was all normal. But then suddenly, mom acted like a wild toddler and grabbed a bag of marshmallows and hid them inside her baggy sweater. What? Mom was stealing? I ran to her and she knew I'd seen her, and she put the bag back. When we got home, I confronted mom, and she broke down into tears. What? Who doesn't like marshmallows? I just wanted them, so, um, I sort of just grabbed the bag. Wow, that's your excuse? Mom, you're not a two-year-old kid. Please, promise me you won't steal again. Mom rolled her eyes, but promised, and I was relieved. But one time during a parent-teacher meeting, Mom lost it. Seeing the teacher's table full of stationery, Mom's eyes widened, and I knew she was up to no good. And I was right. Just as the teacher went to bring my file, Mom jumped up and started shoving the teacher's stationery in her bag. Before I could react, I heard a laugh. It was Billy from my class. And ever since I'd reported him for cheating on a test, he hated me. <laughs> this is epic. Stealing school stationery? That's a new low. He snatched Mom's bag and turned it upside down. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life, because Mom hadn't just stolen the teacher's stuff. She also had all sorts of things from around the school in her bag. Everyone looked at us like we were freaks. Later, I found myself in the principal's office with Mom. Anne, I truly don't know what to say. This has never happened before. I should be reporting the theft, no matter how small or big, but I want to give you and your mom a chance. Take her to a doctor. Get her checked. This isn't normal. Of course it wasn't normal. Mom had become a habitual thief. After many evaluations by the doctor, we learned that mom was, in fact, sick. She had kleptomania, an uncontrollable urge to steal. It wasn't her fault. Mom, I, I'm so sorry. I will do everything to help you get better. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry too. I wanted to explain it, how it just happens. I'm so ashamed of it all. After that day, I supported mom on her road to recovery. Mom totally avoided going to the supermarkets, which triggered her episodes. She was getting treatment and was also in a self-help group. In a few months, she was doing so much better. But at school, things were anything but normal. Since that parent-teacher meeting, I'd been Billy's favorite target to bully. Seeing me, the guy would say stuff like, like mother, like daughter, I need to check your bag too. He kept doing this for weeks, but one day I just snapped and grabbed his shirt collar when he called me a thief. Stay out of my way or I'll break your teeth. Billy looked scared and I was proud of myself. The idiot did leave me alone, but just for a while. A few months later, we were having a fun fair at school and mom and I had set up a brownie stall. Things were going perfect until Billy and his friends came to buy some brownies. Brownies? For two dollars? So expensive. It's like you're stealing from your customers. Speaking of stealing, is your mom still a thief? I'd had enough. I slapped him hard and suddenly there was pin drop silence. Billy, you are a certified jerk. I bet even your family don't pretend to like you, do they? Just get out of line and stay away from me and my mom. Boy, did Billy look pissed. I'd really hit a nerve there. But then suddenly, he shoved the stall so hard. I tried to push the stall back, but I fell, and the large table fell on me. I let out a scream. I was taken to the hospital, and the doctor told me how I had a mild fracture and had to wear a cast. The next day, the principal visited me at the hospital and informed me how Billy was expelled, and his parents were sending him to a really strict boarding school. 
The guy totally deserved it. With Billy gone, my life was perfect at school. I started to do well in class again and even topped in 10th grade. I wanted to pass high school with flying colors and aim for a scholarship at a prestigious university. Mom was so happy. Oh, my love, I am so proud of you. Mom, so am I. The way you're managing your illness, you make me so proud. Mom and I went to my grandma's for summer vacations and I had the most fun there. When we returned, I was excited to go back to school. But right on the first day, I was walking when a car whizzed past me at full speed, splashing mud all over me. I realized that it was Billy's friend. Yeah, now look like who you are, dirt. I was furious. I so wanted to punch the guy, but just then someone threw a stone at the car and the jerk drove off. I turned to see a boy my age. What an idiot. Your clothes, here, let me help. As the boy helped me wipe the mud off my dress, I felt goosebumps. Um, thanks, I can take care of it. Saying that, I walked away, feeling so nervous. Gosh, that boy was so cute. At school, the teacher announced that we had a new admission in our class and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was none other than my savior. His name was Sebastian and spotting me, he sat next to me with a toothy grin. Hey, I forgot to bring my books. Can we share? Sure thing. Well, Sebastian seems like a nice guy and soon we became friends. He always sat with me and it made me a tad nervous because this guy was a hunk. All the girls were crazy for him. One time there was a basketball match at our school and all of a sudden, Sebastian took off his shirt and there was a loud gasp from the audience. And the next thing, all the girls were around him. Sebastian came running to me. Oh, please, Anne, save me from them. Then you shouldn't have taken off your shirt. Oh, jealous? What? Why would I be jealous? Come on, I know you like me. Well, I'm hoping that you do, because the thing is, I like you, Anne. I like you a lot. Saying that, he kissed me on the cheek and whispered that he'd pick me up for a date in the evening. How could I say no to that? For our first date, Sebastian took me to a picnic on the beach. It was the perfect first date. Before dropping me back home, he kissed me. We dated for weeks and I felt like I had the most perfect boyfriend ever. I was falling for him hard. Until one day, I saw Sebastian surrounded by Billy's friends. What were they doing with Sebastian? Sebastian, uh, can I talk to you? Uh, yeah, maybe later. So what were you saying? Whoa, he actually did that. I was so mad. Throughout the day, I totally ignored him but he was constantly on my mind, so much that I totally forgot about the big test we had in history class and I ended up failing miserably. Gosh, that's what you get when you think about boys. I reminded myself of my goal and decided not to worry about Sebastian at all. But things only got messier when my teachers gave me an F for assignments, saying they never got them. I was so sure I emailed them all my assignments. Some days later, I was called into the school's counselor's office and informed that if I wanted to get my scholarship, I needed to bring my A-game and work harder. I poured all my strength into my studies, but one night I found Sebastian at my door. Wanna go out? What? You act like you don't know me and now you're here? No, I'm not going with you. You can go and hang out with those jerks. Babe, you got it all wrong. I was just busy. Please come with me to this amazing party. Come on, you're my girlfriend. I was determined not to go, but when he literally begged me, I caved in. On our way, Sebastian asked me the most bizarre question ever. So, those jerk guys, they told me you got their best friend expelled. Some guy named Billy? What exactly happened? Got him expelled? I had nothing to do with it. He brought it upon himself. When we parked outside the party, I showed Sebastian pictures of the time I wore a cast. And then I told him all about mom's kleptomania and how Billy was always pestering me and what he did at the fun fair. He looked really shocked. Let's go somewhere else. This party doesn't look worth it. What? We drove like half an hour to be here. Come on. Well, that party was insane. At first, Sebastian seemed edgy, but later he loosened up and we danced like crazy. But when Sebastian spun me, I suddenly found myself facing Billy. Hey thief, did you miss me? I'm so thankful to my brother for getting back at you. Getting back at me? Brother? What was he talking about? I pushed him away and looking at Sebastian, I could tell Billy was telling the truth. Sebastian was his brother. It was so fun messing with your head. First, making your grades go down, 
even deleted your assignments from the school's main computer. Then, my brother totally fooled you into thinking he cared for you. And now, he's gonna dump you. Oh, you're so pathetic. Come on, let's finish this party on a fun note. I felt furious, but before I could do anything, Sebastian pounced on Billy. Leave her alone. I told you not to do this. You lied, Billy. You lied to me. Huh, <laughs> so what? Don't tell me you have the hots for her now. What happened to family before chicks? I swear, Anne. He said you were the one who got him kicked out of school by wrongfully accusing him of something. I'm so sorry. You're apologizing to this bimbo? And just then, Sebastian punched Billy square in the jaw and then came towards me. But before Sebastian could even open that lying mouth of his, I gave him a tight slap. Stay away from me. I hate you. I ran from that party and cried my heart out to mom. The next day, Sebastian wasn't at school, or the next. The teacher said he'd left. Why do I care? Good riddance. But why couldn't I forget him? I was crushed and distracted, and I just couldn't focus on my studies. And I actually failed high school. All my dreams of going to some big university were crushed. I felt depressed for a long time. But one day, mom took me with her to her support group, and hearing the inspiring stories of others gave me hope. Soon, I started working with mom at the bakery, and after a couple of years, we were able to open a little bakery of our own. It was mom's dream, and I was glad that together, we could make it happen. After a three-year break, I started preparing for high school exams, and this time, I topped and even got a scholarship to my favorite university. Told you you could do it. I never stopped believing in you. Thanks, mom. I love you so much. One day, I was closing up the bakery when I heard a familiar voice calling my name. It was Sebastian. Before you say anything, hear me out. I am so sorry, Anne. Billy, he's my baby brother. He lied to me. I should have known. I am so sorry for everything I did to you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. The next day, a surprise awaited me at the bakery. It was Sebastian with a broom. What the heck? Mom had actually hired him. I really hated it, but mom wanted me to give him a chance because she knew that deep down, I still had feelings for that idiot. Sebastian tried his best to win me over, but I stayed strong. I couldn't let him know that I still cared. One night at the bakery, mom fainted suddenly, and it was Sebastian who took us to the hospital, and we learned she'd had a stroke. I was devastated. I was about to start college, and this happened. But thank God Sebastian was with us. He took care of mom, and I was able to leave for college. While I was miles away, Mom called me every day and told me how Sebastian took care of her and the bakery, and then she said something that got me thinking about my feelings for Sebastian. Honey, you know, sometimes love needs a second chance because it wasn't ready the first time around. Think about it. She was so right. So during summer break, I traveled back to my town and went straight to the bakery where Sebastian was working, alone. Hey, what are you doing here? Without replying, I kissed him and Sebastian swept me into his arms. Anne, can we start over? Can we create new memories? Can you give me another chance? Because I love you so much. I love you too. Story time about how I cheated on my husband, lied about getting pregnant, and left with all his money. This time, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one, you guys. A little background, my husband and I met two years ago. And lucky for me, he's a wealthy plastic surgeon. So a little backstory. I actually met him because I wanted to get a nose job. I actually hit it off right away, even though he's older than me and, you know, wasn't the best looking. After the appointment, I decided I would get the nose job. A few days later, I get a phone call. Guess who it is? It's the wealthy plastic surgeon who I just saw. He asked me out on a date and I said yes, of course. By the way, at the time, I was a sugar baby, so I had a few sugar daddy. I figured he would just become another sugar daddy. He took me out to the best restaurant in town, and you better believe I ordered the most expensive thing on the menu. After my surgery, he would bring me food, which was just really nice. Then he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I decided to give him a chance. I even broke up with two sugar daddies and boyfriend for an allowance. He said, of course. There's so much more to the story. Part two is up. Part two about how I cheated on my husband, lied about being pregnant, oh yeah, and stole all of his money. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. This was sent to me on Instagram. So like I said in part one, I had asked him for an allowance. Of course he said yes and offered me $3,000 a month. I accepted even though it was on the low end. By the way, I still had one sugar daddy at this time. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I was pretty obsessed with the Kardashians. My goal in life is to look like Kim K. So now that I had a plastic surgeon boyfriend, I decided to ask him what other surgeries he thinks I could do. I already had my nose job. Now I definitely wanted to do some other stuff on my body. But when I told him, he got really upset. He said I didn't need to change anything about me and that I needed to stop looking for attention from other men. That's 
when I told him that would be totally impossible and that I definitely was going to keep my other sugar daddy. He totally flipped out because he didn't know I had a sugar daddy. Then he asked me if I was actually in love with him. I told him that love would grow eventually, but that I really did like him. Then he started playing hard to get, like he wanted me to apologize and beg him, but I was not the type. So we ended up not speaking for a few weeks. Eventually he comes over to my apartment and asks me what surgeries I want to get done. And back to the surgery table I went. Part 3 is up. Sorry about how I cheated on my husband lied about being pregnant. Oh yeah, he stole all of his money. So almost all of it. This is not my story time with me on Instagram. So my plastic surgeon boyfriend decided to do more plastic surgery on But this time, it was free. We decided to get my bum bum done. Again, during the healing process, he was a total angel and brought me food and took care of me. Yeah, he was also paying for all of my bills and my rent at this time, even though I still had a sugar daddy. And he knew it. A few months passed and he asked me to go to Italy with him. Of course I said yes. We stayed at a beautiful place in Tuscany and then he asked me to marry him. He had planned out this whole romantic dinner and of course I had to say yes. But on one condition that I let go of my last sugar daddy. So I told him I would, although I actually did not. So we started planning my dream wedding. We finally got married and I moved into his mansion. Then he told me that I had to get pregnant right away. His excuse is that he's in his 50s and he really wants to have kids. I said I wanted to have a baby too, but I kept taking the pill. I mean, I am just not ready to have kids or to ruin my beautiful body. This is when my other sugar daddy started getting really annoyed because I never spent time with him. It was really hard being torn between two men. Part 4 is up. Part 4 about how I cheated on my husband, lied about being pregnant, and stole all of his money. This is not my story time, it was sent to me on Instagram. So like I said, my sugar daddy was starting to get really annoyed at me because I never spent enough time with him. That's when I broke it to him that I was actually married. He totally flipped out, called me a user, cut me off, and blocked me from everything. So that meant I was not getting money from this sugar daddy at all. It meant I was totally dependent on my husband. Remember I said my husband wanted me to get pregnant? Well, I kept taking the pill because I didn't want to get pregnant. But my husband would ask me every single day how that was going. And I was like, it's going. I even started lying saying that I was gonna go to the baby doctor just to get myself checked and I really wouldn't. Instead I would go have lunch and shop. Around this time an old sugar daddy of mine contacted me who I still had a crush on. He was like super good looking. He offered me some money and asked me if I wanted to go on a few dates so of course I said yes. I accepted because I really wanted to just separate myself financially from my husband. I didn't want to be dependent on him all the time. So when my husband was at work I would go out on dates with this new sugar daddy. The sugar daddy wanted me to go on a trip with him and I had to say no. He got really upset and started asking questions. Of course I didn't tell him that I was married but he started getting really suspicious. He also started to catch feelings really quick. Like he always wanted to be with me. He would text me all the time. And that's when my husband finds a text message from the sugar daddy. I basically denied everything and I told him that I no longer had any sugar daddies, but my husband did not believe me. That's when he calls my sugar daddy from my phone and tells him to leave me alone. And the sugar daddy told him that only I could make that decision. So I basically had to cut off the sugar daddy right in front of my husband. My husband was like really angry at this time. So I was on my best behavior for the next few weeks. But after a few weeks, he was still really angry so I realized I needed to start taking money out of the account that he gave me. So I started transferring money from his account to my account and then from my account to another account at a different bank. And guess what? My husband did not notice one bit. He had several other accounts and investments and all this other stuff so he never really noticed if anything went missing from that one account. After a few months I had $50,000 in that bank account. I knew it wasn't enough so I had to start taking more money out. And then a few months after that, I was at $120,000. I knew this was enough to get me a little house somewhere and just like basically live by myself. That's when I devised a whole plan. I would leave the country and buy myself a house. I even started looking for a real estate agent in other countries. But then the poo hit the fan. My husband found my pills and asked me if I was actually trying to get pregnant or not. Once again, I started lying and I told him that of course I wanted to have a baby with him. Then he insisted we go to the doctor together. That's when he found out that I had not gone to the doctor once. He told me that if I didn't want kids, we would have to get a divorce, so I told him that I didn't want kids. That's when I told him I wanted a divorce and that I only wanted half of his stuff. He started laughing in my face and left. I knew I had to act quick because it was a matter of time before he found out I stole all that money. The very next day, I booked a flight and left. He started blowing up my phone, asking me where I was calling me. Then he started threatening me for taking all the money in the bank account and that he hired private investigators to find me. Now I'm considering going back to him, but I honestly don't know what to do. I got myself a cute little house and even found a new sugar daddy. But I know he's still looking for me. What should I do, you guys? I think I really messed up, you guys.